Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and I am worn out. Oh my gosh. It was two and a half days of the initial campaign for the First Kill graphic novel. It's now on in demand indefinitely, essentially, until it goes to print. And it's the same link, it's the same perks, same prices, same everything. It's just in demand. At the end of two and a half days, there were a thousand backers, $85,000. First Kill. For its first three days, as compared to Expendables, 20% better in both revenue and backers. And I'm reading Craven's Last Hunt. I keep the Wikipedia page up so I can remember because it skips through three different titles. I mean, look at this. Absolutely beautiful. So, in the last few days before launching the campaign, and then the first three days... I didn't go anywhere. It was just all Instacart, Grubhub, and it was just working. And it's weird how mental work is much more exhausting than physical work. But I had no time or energy to check in on all of the stupidity of the comic book industry. And you know what? It was really, really nice. When I went back, nothing had changed. <laughs> it was just the same stupid fighting and people pretending to like something. And, oh, 8 billion more sub-stacks, and, oh, we started a new imprint. Nobody cares. Now, just because I wasn't paying attention to the modern industry doesn't mean I wasn't reading comics, like I'm reading comics every day, or listening to podcasts, specifically Rob Servations talking about the hero's return. Is it a debacle? It was an experience, let's say. And then when I peek back in, I'm noticing something. A lot of people in mainstream comics don't seem to like it. They aren't really into it. They treat it like it's jury duty. I see this tweet by Stephanie Phillips. She's got a new book at Marvel. One would assume that would be exciting. And this is the announcement. I get to announce a new project this month. Hashtag Marvel. Like I said, mental work is exhausting and... They're having Stephanie write like six books a month between Marvel, DC, and Independence, so maybe she's just tired. So then I read this interview with uh, Tom King. It's, it's just inertia. <laughs> like, there's no excitement to any of it. First of all, he starts off and he's being jokey, but like, he has no sense of humor, so it's just a total fail. And what this eventually boils down to is that Tom King's shtick is that he takes amazing characters created by geniuses, and then he sprays his stink all over them. What Jack Kirby property am I going to ruin this time? Oh, it's Dingbats of Danger Street. Okay, that was random. And once I started listening to Rob's observations, a lot of people said, hey, take everything Rob says with a huge grain of salt. I have to say that his excitement, his enthusiasm, made me go back and realize it's even worse than I remember. This is terrible. So for people who don't know, the Image crew left Marvel in, what was it, 1992? And then the comic book industry started to spike. Money printer go brr. But then it started to crest fairly soon for multiple reasons. And it was sliding from about like 94 95 people really started to notice. So Marvel was having some problems. So they're like, hey, who are those popular guys? They had new owners. They're like, oh, Rob Liefeld, Jim Lee. Okay, get them. Have them do a contract to do a year or two of Marvel characters. It was shocking because on the way out, they are all talking mad shit. So to see them come back just four years later was kind of shocking. And there were people at image like Todd McFarlane and Eric Larson who were frankly disgusted by it. So when you listen to his podcast, he has an idea. His idea was that Steve Rogers was never in hibernation, that he was basically brainwashed to forget he was Captain America and they had S.H.I.E.L.D. watching over him to see if he ever remembered. And it was actually a fairly solid story. And then the execution was like, what the fuck? What is this? That is shit. That's a tank. 
freaking helmets like literally the size of the skull. So originally Chuck Dixon was supposed to be writing this. And then Rob even says, Chuck read Rob's notes and said, I have some notes of my own. And he was not putting up with it. So uh, Jeff Loeb was jockeying for this position. Jeff Loeb comes from Hollywood. Chuck Dixon tells an amazing story about meeting the producers of Expendables. And they were considering him to write the second movie. So they gave him their ideas. And then he's like, interesting. Here's what I would do. And then he laughs about this later on. He goes, I didn't know the Hollywood game. I didn't realize that a screenwriter's job is to take whatever stupid ass idea the producers have and do the best version of that. It's not to say, I don't think that will work. It's not to say, let's do something else. So Rob brought Jeff Loeb aboard and he did kind of the Hollywood thing. He didn't really argue against anything that Rob said. He just kind of rolled with it, cashed the checks, kept his mouth shut. And he did the best he could on some of the worst art that has ever been in comics. I mean, this is just so bad. And I remember at the time thinking it was terrible. I remember reading interviews at the time. and He was clearly excited for it. And even now, talking about it, his pitch doesn't sound that bad. If you hand it off to someone who's an actual writer, not just doing the scripting, not just writing the dialogue, but writing the entire plot, it could absolutely work. But don't tell me he was actually trying when he was drawing this shit. Because this is terrible. I mean, look at the proportions. This is not supposed to be a superhuman guy. His arm weighs 600 pounds. Special appearance by Ethan Hunt. Yes, that Ethan Hunt. Although this version apparently gets killed. So Rob was supposed to have this for at least a year. He ended up being taken off the book after six months. So then Jim Lee was angling to be editor-in-chief of Marvel. He was going to use this Heroes Reborn as a dry run. And supposedly, Bill Jemis, who was working with, like, I think a trading card company that had, that was bought by Marvel, it's complicated. He put the kibosh on it by going to the execs at Marvel and saying, Jim Lee was given the back six issues of Rob Liefeld's run. And look at what he did with it. I totally forgot that the Wildstorm characters were in the Marvel Universe. Not in crossover events, I remember those. Well, technically this was a pocket universe. But this story is awful. It's junk. Everyone was just turning out their worst work. And supposedly Bill Jemis went to the execs and said, Jim Lee was given more responsibilities. And even when he hired good people, they did some of the worst work of their career. So this is the first issue where Jim Lee took over Captain America. And honestly, that cover is pretty legit. And we did get one really good page by Travis Charest. But this is just shit. And this was like him being handed the assignment. It's like, hey, you don't just have Fantastic Four and Iron Man. You also have Captain America and the Avengers. You got four titles, Jim. And he's just like, yeah, just shit out, whatever. Just put whoever on it. Who cares? And it's kind of shocking to see this over and over again. How little interest mainstream pros have in their own work. And this was produced by Jim Lee at a Wildstorm, which I'm coming to realize it was my favorite comic book company for 20 years. And it might be the worst comic book company that ever existed. Yes, I know there are exceptions, but I don't think any company has turned out such a high percentage of substandard work than Wildstorm did. It's shocking. Reading all of Divine Right without quitting is like a Mr. Beast challenge. So if you wonder why books are terrible, it's because at some point, somebody who really needs to care doesn't. And nothing can fix it afterwards. You can hand it to someone who cares and they can hand it to someone who cares, but the first time it's handed to someone who doesn't care, everything falls apart. Everyone on First Kill cares. I was going to say that's one of the reasons it's so good. That's the reason it's so good. So it's the same link you've seen before. There's no functional difference when it goes into an in-demand store. Thanks for watching.